In the last video, we made this cow with a moo, and we compiled it and signed it and installed it to the GAC, but I didn't really tell you what the GAC is or show you where the GAC's at or how it's structured or any of that. In this video, I want to explain that. But we need to do a little bit of a history lesson to understand the convenience, the coolness, the awesomeness of the GAC. I have here C slash Windows slash System32. Before .NET came out and we had managed DLLs, we had unmanaged DLLs. In fact, you can still make unmanaged DLLs and they're still quite common. If I want to install my application, I'll just say this is Jamie's application. And I have a DLL, let's just pick on this one, bcdprov.dll, right, bcdprov.dll. And I want to make it globally available to the computer. Generally, I would install it into this folder here. So my application would sit in its own folder, and then the DLL sits in its own folder. And then let's say you come along, I'm going to say u.exe. And you also have a bcdprov.dll, but your DLL is completely different from mine. It just so happens we named our DLL files identically the same. And you want to install yours so it's available to other applications on the computer. Maybe you're going to install more than just your executable. You're going to have several executables. That's going to use this bcdprov.dll. Well then, let's say you copy yours into this system32 and you overwrite mine. Well, all of a sudden my code's going to break because it's going to try to open up your DLL and say, I can't find these functions you're talking about. What's going on? This makes no sense. What I've just shown to you or described to you here is called DLL hell. Not an ideal situation, and it's one of the problems that .NET solved when it created when they created the GAC. Now the GACs kind of evolved over time. Back in the day we go to C slash Windows slash assembly and then notice we don't really have a, a file folder structure showing up instead a, a, anymore. Instead we have this kind of nice view here where we can see C assemblies. I bet we could find one here. Assemblies with the exact same name like this one. M C S store D B we have two versions of the assembly side by side. Looks like one is native uh, x86 instructions, another one's native AMD64. And so these are able to sit side by side. And it looks like they're side by side in the same folder, but they're not. It's just this nice kind of view that Windows gives us. If you want to learn more about this old school thing that uh, Windows does, go look up shfusion.dll. It's the plugin that gives us this nice view. The GAC is actually a little bit more complex in order to get a, get this we call the side-by-side -side deployment. We're able to deploy the same assembly essentially, but if there's one difference, is a difference in our assembly, in this case the difference is just the, the architecture. The public key tokens are identical and the versions are identical, but still we can deploy side-by-side. -side. Well recently Windows ditched this, or Microsoft ditched this GAC and said, you know, Let's make this folder called Microsoft.NET Assembly, and this is where we will store all the .NET assemblies. Here are the native images, image deployment. So if you compile your code natively in Janet, that kind of thing, we'll talk about that in future videos, then it can go in here. But generally, your assemblies will go in this GAC missile folder. That's the Microsoft Intermediate Language we've seen several times. And you can see here's subfolders. This is... This is the actual structure of the GAC, and we can install assemblies side by side into these subfolders. Let's let's do an example. I'm gonna come over here and let's let's compile this again. We have assembly version one, Jamie's Moo, that sort of thing, and I believe we still have Jamie's key. Yep, Jamie's key here. Let's make you a strong key file as well. SN K your key dot strong name key. Hit enter. We have uh, a new key file. Let's list the contents of the directory. We have Jamie's key and your key. Let's do Jamie's Moo version 1 here. I'm going to say C sharp compiler. Uh, let's get rid of the old farm though. Erase farm.dll. Start out with a clean slate. We have main class and both of our keys. C sharp compiler. Please target library. The out will be farm.dll. The input file will be, oh, we, we need the key file as well. Key file, 
This will be Jamie's key dot strong name key, and we should of course specify main class dot cs as the input. Hit enter. We now have farm dot dll. I'm going to install this dll into the GAC. So GAC util, please install the farm assembly into the GAC. Hit enter. Assembly successfully added to the cache. Now that's Jamie's farm. Let's erase that farm dot dll just for good measure. Clear the screen. I'm going to compile it again. I'm hitting the up arrow here to get the C# -sharp compiler in. And instead of using Jamie's key, strong name key, I am going to use your key, strong name key. And I'm also going to install your farm assembly into the GAC. So GAC util, well heck, I can just hit the up arrow. GAC util install farm assembly. Assembly successfully added to the cache. Now we have Jamie's farm and your farm both in the cache. Let's go back here and oh look here's a new folder it just showed up when we said gank util dash install. I wonder what's in here. Let's double click and we have version or v4 and then look version 1 here's the assembly version. Remember we're doing assembly version 1. Alright assembly version 1 and then oh I wonder what this code out here is. Do you remember what these should look familiar? These are the public key tokens. One is for you and one is for me. We can find out exactly which one is for who if we... Let's just do Ildaz. And remember we did your... Let's clear the screen. List the contents of the directory. Farm.dll. This is yours because I assigned it with your key. Remember to ex extract the public key we have to use the strong name tool dash p to get the public key out. And I believe it's your key dot sn key, and I'm going to say this is your public key dot whatever. The extensions don't really matter. Public key written to your public key, whatever. To actually see the public key code, I'm going to say strong name tool. Please tell me the public key that is inside of your public key dot whatever. And the public key token is D08BC. Look at that, D08. BC. So if I go in here, we finally find the farm.dll file. Right, going back, this is Jamie's version. This is my version. And so that's how .NET or the GAC resolves this side-by-side -side deployment now. Instead of putting the DLLs all in the same folder as we saw at the beginning of this video where it was C slash Windows slash System32. Instead, we're getting subfolders, and the subfolders are named according to the public key token, and the version, and the assembly name. That's actually kind of cool. Remember, I, I said there are four things that make up an assembly name. I'll put them here again. It's the, the basic name. In this case, it's uh, farm. Well, it's hard to talk and type at the same time. The basic name for our assembly is farm. The version, well, the versions are identical in this case. They're both version 1.0. The public key token, public key token. And again, this is the only thing that you and I cannot uh, spoof on each other. The only way you can get my public key token and sign an assembly with my public key token is by me sending you my, my key file. And then we also have version, which I've told you to ignore. Ignore. We'll we'll get to version later. Just ignore the version thing for now. But anyway, that's how the GAC separates it all up. We have the basic name here, and then inside that folder we have the assembly version, and we have an underscore. We're kind of hashing the name a little bit. Underscore, and then the public key, and then oh, by the way, there's the farm assembly. So when .NET searches for Jamie's farm, it'll look in this folder, C Windows Microsoft Net Assembly. GAC missile, and then say, okay, well, we obviously have farm assemblies. Let's go in this folder. I'm looking for version 1. Well, we have two version 1s right there. But then I'm also looking for the one with the public key token 2A25980, blah, 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 blah. And in there, it finds it and says, okay, this must be the assembly I'm looking for. Let's load this up. And then sure enough, when it loads up this assembly, it can ensure that the assembly name and the manifest and everything in there matches. So there you go. There's the GAC structure. There's side-by-side -side deployment. And that's just really cool how they solve that DLL hell problem and that sort of thing. Now when we uninstall assemblies, I showed you uninstalling assemblies. We say GAC util 
dash uninstall. And I'm going to say farm. Notice I'm just saying the basic name farm, but I have two farm assemblies installed here. Well, it just turns out the GAC util, if you look up the options for GAC util, you can actually specify more to it, the version, the public key, that sort of thing. But I say uninstall, and it says, oh, I'm going to fry both of them. <laughs> I found two assemblies called farm. You saw some flashing over here, and in my C Windows Microsoft Net assembly, GAC missile, and the farm directory is gone. Both farm assemblies are gone from the GAC. So there you go.